Are you ready to pass your AWS Cloud Practitioner exam? I was in your shoes about two weeks ago. I just recently passed my Cloud Practitioner exam. So today I'm going to link you to all the material that really helped me out, as well as telling you material that I would avoid and a few things that I wish I did differently that would have made passing the exam even easier. So I wanna keep this video fun. We're gonna do a bit of a tier list from S tier to D tier, ranking all the material that I used. So studying for your AWS Cloud Practitioner exam, I've heard can take anywhere from 10 to 50 hours-ish, and I guess it all depends on if you have prior experience to working with AWS. In general, if I was to give a rough guide of how long you should give yourself to prepare for it, I would say one month is really solid. They have these online proctored exams and take your exam in your home and they have exam dates pretty much available every day of the week at all sorts of hours. That's actually one of my regrets in preparing for the exam. I, I mean, you can do it in like a week or so. I really started studying for like about a week where I would just um, go to work and then come home and then study every day and I was well prepared but I wish I gave myself more time so I could have studied a bit more learned a bit more and also like felt more comfortable with the exam so one month is in my should be a perfect amount of time for most people but of course it varies it might be a week for you all right so let's go into the tier list so we the first resource we have here is the AWS Cloud Practitioner uh, full course from Free Code Camp. Here we go. And there's a, they actually have a bunch of different courses. I like Free Code Camp. I think it's a great resource in general. You can learn a lot from them. I think they have you know great people that are instructors, but I didn't really like it. I mean, I'm gonna rank as C tier. My biggest complaint was, I mean, it's 13 hours and it was really, really lab heavy. And I, I just think there's much better ways of studying. And if you want to do labs, I th think shorter labs are much better in videos in general. Was, the, was it bad? No, I mean, it had like a lot of material. And if you watched the whole course back to front, I think you'd probably be, it would help you prepare quite a bit, but I really think there's much better there's better resources out there that we're gonna cover. So I'm putting it in C tier. No hate to free code camp. It's a good good resource. All right, anyway, next. Uh, Learn to code uh, 1017. It's another YouTube channel. You see I found the video right here. He makes a bunch of AWS videos. I can't speak to the other videos, but I can say this one in particular right here, AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Complete Study Guide 2024. He did a really good job. I liked, uh, first of all, that he kept it much more condensed, just three hours. I thought he had a great uh, teaching style and covered the core, a lot of the core things on the exam. Uh, just watching this video, is it gonna help you be ready for the practitioner exam? Uh, probably not. I think you'd still have to go through a lot of the other material. Unless you've worked with AWS a lot already, this video isn't going to cut it in just getting you ready for the exam, but it's a great resource. Definitely worth watching it from start to finish. I got a lot out of it. All right, so next I have AWS and this is supposed to just represent AWS documentation. Let's just say, for example, you're getting uh, S3 buckets wrong quite a bit. Well, you can just go on Google, look up AWS S3 buckets, and AWS itself is going to have a ton of documentation on, on it. And I found this to be a pretty good resource just like reading through their documentation here and marketing materials. And like you can go to storage classes, like that might, that's something on the exam. And and they even have like, like videos here as well. So you can both read and often be able to watch videos learning about the different service offerings they have. So 
So yeah, I found the documentation definitely a helpful way of studying. Okay, next we have a really strong one. This is an easy A tier, maybe even almost S tier, but that's the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Official Practice Question Set. I think I'm gonna put it in S tier. It's This definitely helps a lot. So. These are uh, 65 questions. It closely mimics the actual exam. I recommend, I mean, what I did is I went through it several times. Like I went through it one time when I was kind of early on in my studies and saw how well I did, kind of took notes on what I got wrong. And then I studied a bunch of material, came back in like a week and did it again. I mean, in particular, I really recommend like going question by question and seeing what you got wrong. Like for example, if you see that you got S3 bucket intelligent hearing question wrong, uh, you can look it up on the documentation and try to learn more about it. Like this combined with other methods is a really good way of getting you ready. All right, so next, uh, definitely a solid A tier is the Cloud Practitioner Cloud Quest. It was so cool that AWS made their own game. Yeah, so I, I got a lot out of Cloud Quest. I actually made a video doing a full playthrough of it. it. Has quite a few labs here. Yeah, you learn a lot. You're like this uh, guy that's kind of a cloud consultant going around and you have all these people that have problems like see this guy needs help with his S3 bucket and you go ahead and build the architecture in a practice lab environment. So this was great. Strongly recommend doing Cloud Quest. It's maybe not the best resource in preparing you for the exam. It will definitely help you, but you'll learn a lot if you're new to AWS. So easily A tier. All right, so next is ChatGBT as a resource. I'm putting this at B tier right, right along with uh, just reading AWS documentation. I also f I found ChatGBT really good when I was doing practice exam questions and there were certain things I just didn't understand or maybe there was a service that was like, wait, I've never heard of this service and then just chatting through it with uh, ChatGBT like, what what is this? Why do people use it? Uh, how can it be helpful? And tell me like a real world example of it being used. And questions like that definitely helped me. All right, so next we have AWS escape room. Um, I'm going to actually put that like a higher form of A tier than Cloud Quest. This is another game AWS made. Yeah, so this is AWS escape room. I'm not sure if this resource is free, but you can do a like free trial for seven days and just cancel it immediately. And, um, and you should be able to finish this within seven days. I thought it was a really well-made game. I, I would argue even better than Cloud Quest. It, it was very interesting. So you are you get to make your own character. Mine was like this guy in a hot dog suit. And you have this friend who is a giraffe who uh, gets kidnapped by a toothpaste uh, company. And then you have to save them by answering AWS uh, exam questions. It's a bit like a fever dream, but it's a very educational one. So, and they have the weirdest dancing when you win. So yeah, it might be worth it just to see how they dance at the very end. So great resource. Biggest difference between Cloud Quest and Escape Room, I would say, is Escape Room has a more of an exam question focus, whereas Cloud Quest is more lab focused. So probably escape rooms, the better one for preparing you just for the cloud practitioner exam. Uh, cloud quest, probably you'll learn more from it. I think like escape room, I finished much quicker than cloud quest. All right. So next I have on my A tier, um, just like a practice quiz set, which is very, oh wait, actually, sorry, I'm going to switch these. So this is the official exam question set. And then this is like a AWS uh, quiz set. So the difference is this is like 20 questions. This is 65. They're both just AWS exam questions. So they're both really good. Uh, this is just a tier because it's shorter. So you get less questions, but do both of them. Highly recommend it. 
the question sets, you can find it. I'm going to link everything. Don't worry. But if you just Google AWS uh, Cloud Practitioner Certification and find this, this page on AWS, you can find right here the exam guide and then also the like quiz set. All right, the actual ex exam guide PDF. This is definitely S tier. This is one that I wish I did more. I think I would have uh, did even much stronger on the exam. I mean, I passed, but if I did this, I would have passed even more easily. It's uh, maybe one of the less interesting resources, but extremely helpful. It lists out what might be on the, what's going to like the different sections of the exam and gives you like service, all the potential services that could go on the exam. So you can look through all those services and start like researching them through documentation or chat GBT uh, to make sure that you understand them. All right, next, this is probably my favorite resource. So easily S tier is the AWS Cloud Practitioner Essentials course. Yeah, so the course looks something like this. It has different modules where they have a video and then down here they also have a uh, description with graphics as well. They use a lot of analogies. Uh, in particular, I thought the section where they explained subnets and network access control lists was really good. The analogy they used of like a doorman, that really helped the AWS instructors, they are all really great. And the other like thing I loved about it as at, it, at the very end, they give you like a final assessment course where you get to do like another practice exam for you to review to see if you're ready. So yeah, this was really good resource. You definitely should try and take this before the exam. My biggest regret actually was not going through and watching all of the videos a second time before the exam because I think that really would have helped me quite a bit. Maybe my least favorite section was just module one. It was a little bit too uh, basic, but once they got into it, I really liked how they explained the different services. So definitely, definitely check it out. All right, well, that's my full tier list. I wish you luck in passing the exam. I think studying a combination of all these resources will get you more than ready.